always thought-provoking and informative. Forget the spin and media bias from the left and right. We know you are sick and tired of being told what to think, how to act, and what you can and can't do. Direct from the Ustream It Broadcast Network, it's time for another edition of the last Christian newscast and radio show with your hosts, J.D. Williams and T.L. Farley. Real news and biblical common sense analysis starts in three, two, one. Well, welcome everybody and thanks so much for joining us for another edition of the last Christian newscast and radio show. My name is J.D. Williams here in beautiful East Texas, joined by my co-host and my brother in Christ, Mr. T.L. Terry Farley. How you doing today, Terry? <laughs> Saved and on my way to heaven, Joel. There you all go. the rest of this, all the rest of this is just loose change. <laughs> well, now we got a lot to cover today. Uh, we also have a topic that we promised people that we were going to talk about um, in, in regard to one scripture. And here is a news flash for everybody. I'm going to start this off right away. Sure. Terry has a book out. It's called Blast Off Repeal More. It's in its fifth edition. I highly urge you to go out and get it. This book will be helpful to you in understanding what lies ahead of us in particular, the rapture of the church. He's got over 40 years of experience in doing this stuff. He has uh, studied the Bible very intently and intensively. He has got a lot more um, uh, ability to put everything together than I do. I admit that. However, we have a, a difference of opinion on one, one verse of more than 1,350 verses that he has. Uh, listed in his book, Blast Off Repeal More. So uh, one out of 1,350, we disagree on, Terry. One out of 1,350. <laughs> now, I don't agree with my wife uh, more frequently than one out of 1,350 times, okay? So yeah. I want everybody to know that and to put that in perspective when we get there because we're not going to be arguing this, and here's why. This has nothing to do with your salvation, not one Amen. thing. Not Amen. one thing. People can read the Bible, and many times their understanding of one particular verse may vary from that of another Christian or yes. even a preacher. Even two different yeah. preachers can stand side yeah. by side and have a different <laughs> understanding of one particular verse. Okay? Amen. So with that, I want you to understand that when we get there, you'll understand exactly why I say, don't worry about it. We got a difference of opinion. Move on. It's not earth shattering. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Now then, before we get into all that, I want to get some news out of the way, Terry. Uh, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is about Sudan. And you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I heard uh, our friend Amir uh, just uh, last night talking about mm -hmm. Sudan and that this is actually uh, when he does it, you know, he and he has all the different interpretations and knows all these countries a lot more than we mm -hmm. do. Sudan yes. is Ethiopia. See, land is mm. Ethiopia in the Bible. Mm. So um, yeah. now he breaks that down. I want you to go to Behold Israel if you don't understand this. Go to Behold Israel. Mm. Look at um, Amar, I'm sorry, Amir Tosfarte. Uh, last night he had a very special, and that is on YouTube. You can find it. And he breaks all this down. He puts it in perspective where you know that Sudan is actually from the old biblical text, Ethiopia. Okay, here we go. Sudan's warring generals have agreed to send representatives for negotiations, possibly in Saudi Arabia, a top UN official in the country said. If the talks come together, they would initially focus on establishing a stable and reliable ceasefire, Volker Perth stated. However, he warned of challenges in holding the negotiations. A string of temporary truces over the past week has eased fighting only in some areas. Libby St. James reporting. Now, from what he was saying last night, this has nothing to do with politics. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with religion, not a thing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that this has to do with is two generals who want power. That's it. So they're mm -hmm. making life miserable for all of Sudan. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, so I just want to put that in perspective, but let you know that Sudan is a part of the coalition that will come against Israel in the Gog and Magog War. We'll get into that in further discussions on down the line. Now, I've got a couple of quick news stories for you here. First of all, inside Kenya, there's a starvation cult, or I should say was, uh, that came to a tragic end with more than 100 followers dying. This Kenyan cult leader, Paul McKenzie, lived with hundreds of followers in the makeshift homes uh, with uh, polyurethane uh, 
sheeting, and thatch in a remote forest camp that he divided into uh, three or into biblical names like Jerusalem, Judea, you know, things like that. Uh, uh, Anyway, uh, here's his quote. I heard the voice of Christ telling me that the work I gave you to preach end time messages for nine years has come to an end. I followed that voice that told me that I had finished the work. So then he instructed all of his people to starve themselves to death. The the children first, followed by the women, followed by the men. And it says here that there are hundreds still missing. So we know of over 100 that have been buried in shallow graves, and there are still more than 100 missing. If you want to talk about a false Mm -hmm. messiah, there you Mm -hmm. go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Second uh, quick item here, the United States Air Force has retreated from Taiwan without firing a shot. The USAF may emerge a smaller but still world-leading force, is what the uh, article here from the Telegraph UK says. Um, Mm -hmm. At worst, it might uh, code lead uh, to the most dangerous rival, the Chinese People's Liberation Army, the PLAAF. It's already made uh, something that looks awfully like a retreat from the Western Pacific, withdrawing squadrons in the face of the growing Chinese menace. So, uh, in other words, you know how Biden said he would help out uh, Taiwan if they were attacked? It looks like that's a false promise because he's already Mm -hmm. withdrawing uh, Air Force uh, personnel there in, uh, you know, hoping that uh, China does not invade uh, Taiwan. All right, now we're going to get into just a couple of uh, really quick things with Russia, and then we'll get into a more biblical uh, discussion, okay? Well, I'll tell you what, Terry, I'm going to put you up early. I'm going to put you up early, and and that way we we can just go ahead and roll uh, through the rest Mm -hmm. of the— through the rest of the first half of the show. Remember, uh, we are now broadcasting on all of our affiliates for the full hour, and we really appreciate yeah. it. So no matter where you guys are listening to us, whatever station that you're on, uh, you are going to be, um, well, it's a good thing if you will follow the last Christian newscast and radio show because of the fact we're going to tell you what everybody else doesn't want you to know. We gave you some information just in our last show about uh, the rocket fire and how the Iron Dome didn't work and why it didn't work in Israel. Believe it or mm-hmm. not, that controversy is still going on in Israel. Very few people want to report it. Not even Amir wants to mm-hmm. report it. He hints at yeah. it, but he won't report it. Um, mm-hmm. Also, um, Eric Stackelback, he won't report it. He just says that the mm-hmm. Iron Dome failed. We gave yeah. you the reason of its failure. You want to find out? Go to www.lastchristian.net and look at our last show, and you will find out exactly why it didn't work. Okay, here we go. Uh, this next is, again, begins us with Russia. The White House said it is now estimated that just since December, Russia has suffered 100,000 casualties, including more than 20,000 killed, as Ukraine has rebuffed a heavy assault by Russian forces in eastern Ukraine. The new figures suggest that Russian losses have dramatically accelerated in recent months. In what has become a grinding war of attrition, the fiercest battles have been in the eastern Donetsk region, where Russia is struggling to encircle the city of Bakhmut in the face of dogged Ukrainian defense. Harry Michaels reporting. Okay, now this is going to be kind of touchy here, and y'all have to pay attention Mm -hmm. and keep up with this. Okay, now you just heard where the United States is reporting casualty counts. They're doing that to try and get Russia to pull out. That's the reason they're trying to get Mm -hmm. them to pull out. Okay, Terry, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you your two minutes, and then I'm going to let I'm going to let people have it with this Russia stuff because there's a lot, there's a lot, lot to it. So first of all, here you go, Terry, uh, and this is the last Christian charge with my (laughs) co-host Terry Farley. Amen. And last Christian child, engaging the sword today, James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. To appreciate more fully as we daily anticipate Jesus' shout, let us begin at the beginning, remembering God's timing in his divine creation of the world. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. 
and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters, and which were above uh, the firmament. It was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and morning were the second day. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called his seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw it was good. And then in the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay, God Jerry, said, I got to cut you be. off right there. Yep. And actually, okay. I gave you a couple of extra seconds because I had a problem here that I had to run Not out real problem. quick. So I didn't okay. even get to hear what you said. <laughs> okay. Well, so, you know it. It's in Genesis one, so you're good. okay. All right. Well, I'll, you you know me. I'll, I'll listen back to it anyway. But I, you know, I'm just letting That's you know right. why you in, in case you were wondering how come you got to go there with a little bit extra. Uh, anyway, I, I just played for you the the thing where the United States was giving Russia casualty counts to try and encourage mm -hmm. them to leave. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Trying it's trying to show the world that Russia's losing. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, let's get into this one now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you something, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, from Ukraine's Zelensky, the president there. Mm -hmm. Now, he's in The Hague right now, and he's saying that Putin mm -hmm. must face justice. He said, uh, we're going to set up a, a separate tribunal to show these people are not untouchables. We need justice. Mm -hmm. It says the International Criminal Court, a permanent war crimes court based in The Hague in March, issued an arrest warrant for Putin. All right. Further down, another quote here, we all mm -hmm. want to see a uh, different Vladimir here in The Hague, the one who deserves to be sanctioned for his criminal actions here in the capital of international law. This, this is what Zelensky's saying again. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure we will see that happen when we win, and we will win. Sorry, uh, Mr. President, but I just don't buy the win part because uh, yeah. uh, I think Russia's going to I think Russia is going to do something, and I'm going to show you why now. Because uh, remember now, the, the United States is giving casualty counts, trying to encourage them mm -hmm. to leave. Zelensky's trying mm -hmm. to get uh, the Hague to act. He and Putin mm -hmm. definitely do not get along, right? So listen to this now very carefully and watch mm -hmm. this very carefully. Vladimir Putin's spokesman has accused the U.S. of involvement in what he says was a drone attack on the Kremlin. Without providing evidence, Dmitry Peskov told journalists that Washington had dictated that Kyiv carry out an attack. Ukraine insists it wasn't behind any strike at the Kremlin. Lee Rini is the editor of Lviv Today. The Ukrainian government has said clearly that they do not attack inside of Russia. They do attack inside of Russian-occupied Ukrainian lands, but they do not attack inside of Russia. It does them no good. It does not help the uh, upcoming counteroffensive, uh, and there's no point. It comes as Ukrainian cities were attacked in missile and drone strikes on Thursday morning. No casualties have been reported. Meanwhile, President Volodymyr Zelensky is visiting The Hague on Thursday and the International Criminal Court. He's used the surprise visit to reiterate calls for the creation of a war crimes tribunal for Russia's alleged crimes in Ukraine. When there is a tradition of inevitable punishment of aggression, then there will be a tradition of guaranteed non-repetition of aggression. If we want true justice, we should not look for excuses and should not refer to the shortcomings of the current international law, but make, make bold decisions that, we, that will correct the shortcomings of those norms that unfortunately exist in international law. Okay, now it, the pictures that you saw during that entire report, but that was mm -hmm. on a loop. That wasn't many drones mm -hmm. going in. That was in a loop. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this was a drone that actually almost hit the Kremlin. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Zelensky is saying that uh, the Ukraine had nothing to do with that. Um, I tend to believe Russia over the Ukraine this time. And, you know, I'm not, trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say Russia good, Ukraine bad. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that in any yeah. way, shape, or form. I'm simply saying that, in my opinion, the Ukraine has acted more than once inside of Russian territory. Now, these two mm -hmm. countries are in conflict. They, there's no declared yeah. war, but they're in conflict mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. And Zelensky's going to do everything that he can to get the Russians to leave. And in his mind, I think he's doing the what he thinks is best in attacking Russia. I went into mm -hmm. detail in the last show and said, I, you know, I think that's pretty stupid. You know, that's, mm -hmm. again, my, my opinion of it, because the best way to unite a country is for another country to do something against it inside its own borders, just like 9-11 mm -hmm. or just like Pearl Harbor or mm -hmm. anything like that. So yeah. um, I just don't think it's wise. Now, uh, Zelensky, again, is saying that he had nothing to do with it, right? Well, Russia mm -hmm. isn't buying it either, as you'll hear here. Vladimir Putin's spokesman has accused the U.S. of involvement in what he says was a drone attack on the Kremlin. Without providing evidence, Dmitry Peskov told journalists that Washington had dictated that Kyiv carry out an attack. Ukraine insists it wasn't behind any strike at the Kremlin. Lee Rini is okay. the editor of Lviv Today. The Kremlin Today. said that Germany's involvement in the Ukraine said. conflict was growing by the day and that Berlin has no way of ensuring that the weapons it had provided to Ukraine was not being used against Russian territory. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said German-supplied weapons were already being used in the Donbas region, which Russia has declared its own, a step Ukraine and the West have dismissed as illegal. Harry Michaels reporting. Okay, and for you guys that are watching this in video form, I'm sorry. It has taken me a minute here to uh, to get get us back on screen the way that we're supposed to. But, uh, and also the overrun there on the audio, I apologize for that too. My hands are not working today. Terry can tell you. I'm, I'm having a little difficulty here in the studio, so you guys kind of bear with me a little bit, if you will. And I do apologize for, for any inconvenience there. But you can see that Russia is getting all worked up here, Terry. They're getting all mm -hmm. worked up about this. And uh, I saw a report today where uh, the U.N. is saying they, sent, they think it's very unlikely. And by the way, that's, this is one report. It's the reason I don't have it listed here. Only one report that um, they don't think that Russia would even think about using tactical nuclear weapons, even though they've threatened to do it now for, what, six months? So yeah. um, I'm, I'm going to stick by my original. I truly believe that they will use, uh, will use tactical nukes. Yeah. I really do. Anyway, uh, any comment on any of that, Mr. Farley? No, uh, no, it's uh, it's way too much. And <laughs> my goodness, what's going on in the world? So yeah. I don't know how you keep up with it. Uh, it's not easy. Um, now, this one, Terry, I put in this report today uh, to get your thoughts on it. I even did a quick search, and I did find some biblical verses. And I didn't have enough time to break them all down, but maybe you know. Okay, I want you to listen to this report, and then if you have any input on it, uh, let me know. Like I said, I did a little research, and it really, there is at least some form of mention of this. But anyway, take a listen. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. Today, rats, and to be more accurate, the plague of so-called super rats that seem to be immune from many commercially available poisons. Pest controllers in many global cities say they're seeing a growing number of more aggressive rats that have bred in suburban environments since the COVID-19 pandemic changed the food economies of many Western cities. In Britain alone, there are an estimated 300 million of them now living cheek by jowl with human populations. Professor Stephen Belmain is with the National Resources Institute. Rats are becoming resistant to the main uh, group of poisons we use. These are anticoagulants. The rat's biology is learning to overcome these poisons. So even though pest control people go out and put this poison out, 
the rats can eat it and it doesn't kill them. So there's a lot of resistance, particularly in urban areas where there's been a lot of repeated use of poison over time. You build up a resistance in that population. So in some countries, they're talking about banning these poisons because the resistance is growing, but also these poisons accumulate in the environment. So they don't break down and they get into wildlife, they get into our water, our soil, and they cause a lot of uh, negative impacts in the environment. So we would like to get rid of them. The problem is, is what is the alternative? The situation is so bad in New York City that the mayor appointed a rat czar last month in a bid to control what he called Manhattan's relentless rat problem. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. Okay, now I'm not trying to get into environmental stuff because of, as far as I'm concerned, the Bible is clear that God decides when the world comes to an end. So it's not going to be the environment, in my opinion, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm basing my opinion on Scripture and on the Bible. So people that want to go out, you know, if, if you want to recycle, go for it, Okay. That's mm-hmm. fine. I got no problem with that. You want to you want to mm-hmm. protect the environment in your way, however that mm-hmm. is. Go for it. I mm-hmm. have no problem with that. But as far as the world coming to an end, uh, climate change isn't going to do it, in my opinion. The only one, according to the Bible, according to the Holy Bible, the only person that ends the earth is God. So you know, do what you want to with the environment. I'm not here to debate the environment. I'm you know I'm going to stick with what God says in the Bible, but. My question to you, Mr. Farley, is do you have any idea, is, a, is are rats involved in this stuff? I mean, you know, we, in, in the Bible it talks about creeping things and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, do you see this in any way as part of prophecy, in any way? And there's no right or wrong answer. Sure, yeah, no, it's a precursor without a doubt uh, in terms of uh, Revelation chapter 6. It talks about the things of the fields, uh, you know, taking over and all this and the other. Yeah, that, that guy, his last bit of his report, he stole my thunder. I was getting ready to come in with a report on New York. I saw a news <laughs> thing on that. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, you know, these are the kinds of things. And whatever you see that's bad and happening, just look in terms of the future. It's only going to it's only going to get worse, folks. Yeah. And I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but I'm also, and Joel, Joel is with me on this, the bearer of good news. We Amen. have a blessed hope Jesus is coming, and he'll take anybody that believes in him out of this world. But you've got to believe in Jesus. Amen. That's the line. Amen and amen. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, I do want to get back into Matthew. Uh, we um have been in that book for a while. I'm trying to remember, Terry, where we left off in Matthew, because I've got them all. Uh, we did, mm-hmm. uh, we, we did. Uh, let's see, chapter 24, verses 32 through uh, 39 last time, if I'm mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. So uh, we would take up now with Matthew uh, 24, chapter 40 through 44. And again, this is right mm-hmm. in Terry's wheelhouse here. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and put this back up on screen, Terry, and uh, if you could see that, sir, and read it for us. Then, Sure. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Uh, getting the good news out first, uh, when it talks about being taken, the man in the field, the women uh, grinding, the woman being taken, that's actually the Greek word paralambano, uh, which means to be taken unto uh, uh, promotion or, or, or to be uh, as drawn near, that someone is drawing them near, and uh, which is what John uh, Jesus said in John 14, uh, verses 1 through 3, when he told Peter, he said, I'm going to receive you unto myself. This is the same phraseology, the same thing. So these people that are being taken, it's a good thing. The ones that are being left, it's a bad thing. Yeah, okay? yeah for real. That's the short yeah. end of it. Yeah. yeah, just like there is a last play in any Amen. football game, Amen. there is that last individual to accept Jesus Christ before Amen. what Terry just Amen. read about 
there, mm -hmm. which is the rapture of the church. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all you've got to do is say that simple prayer of salvation. Just tell the Lord that you know Amen. that you are a sinner, uh, that mm -hmm. um, you know that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, that he spent three days in a tomb. He rose on the third day, just like he said he would. He was seen by more than mm -hmm. 500 people. He's ascended to heaven, sits at the right hand of the Father, mm -hmm. and Amen. he promised us he's coming back for his church before yes. God unleashes seven years of wrath on this earth. And mm -hmm. we believe, we firmly believe, both Terry and I, that everything mm -hmm. that has that is necessary to have been done mm -hmm. has now been completed, and that the next item on the agenda is the imminent rapture of the church, meaning mm -hmm. it can happen at any time. It can happen before I get my next mm -hmm. word out. It might be a mm -hmm. year from now. It might be 10 years from now. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Only God knows the day and the hour. But we believe that the rapture could occur at any moment. Um, Amen. Terry, any? I don't know. I know you got a lot to add to that, but I'm, I'm going to give you two sure. minutes to do it. Go ahead. Yeah, no, two minutes is way too much, Joel. Because okay. the reality is, it's going to be a whole lot faster than that. Um, and that's why when you hear people, you hear some preacher come and he talks on the rapture or or whatever, or Christians on the street or somebody with a Bible. That's why they're so insistent because they recognize this aspect that's called the imminence. Right. Uh, you know, you don't like it when you're talking and somebody interrupts you. That's what's going to happen. I call it sometimes when I'm talking about the rapture, I talk about the great inter interruption. Uh, you know, they, they have this phrase on TV where the, uh, a show is preempted. You know, like we're going along, we've got our radio show. All of a sudden, the government comes in and says, the government's breaking in. We're giving you this report. Da -da -da -da. Right. That's, right. that's a preemption. That's the way the rapture is going to happen. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, and one thing, uh, I, I was holding this report, didn't know if I'd be able to play it or not, but I think it fits So uh, w yeah. with what we're talking about. So I'm going to play this for you real quick. Widespread loneliness in the U.S. poses health risks as deadly as smoking a dozen cigarettes daily, costing the health industry billions of dollars annually, the U.S. Surgeon General said in the latest declaration, Public Health Epidemic. About half of U.S. adults say they've experienced loneliness, Dr. Vivek Murthy said in an 81-page report from his office. The declaration is intended to raise awareness around loneliness, but won't unlock federal funding or programming devoted to combating the issue. Okay, why did I play that? Because loneliness can be defeated if you pick up the Bible and read it. That's why. Amen. Okay. Uh, so Amen. anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Like I said, I didn't think I'd have a place for this. I, I loaded it thinking, well, I'll probably never play it. But it fits mm -hmm. because just Amen. like the, just like the rapture, you can read about that in the Bible. Loneliness, you can be you can be assisted mm -hmm. with that. Depression, you can be uh, assisted Amen. with that. Amen. Everything. Okay. The Bible addresses mm -hmm. everything. Re pick up your mm -hmm. Bible and read it, and you will begin to feel better almost immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now mm -hmm. uh, we have reached the end of the first part of the show. If you uh, don't get it, you want to repeat. Read it uh, someday. All you got to do is go to www.lastchristian.net. That's www.lastchristian.net. We appreciate all the affiliates and anybody else that wants to sign up. Go to www.lastchristian.net. You'll find a way to add the show to your station. We'll be back in just a moment with the second half of the Last Christian Radio Show and newscast. The report says Russian forces have closed or taken over 76 places of worship, looted or destroyed 13, and killed or seized 29 religious leaders in occupied Ukraine. Russia, it says, continues to weaponize religion. According to the report, Russian soldiers are harassing Baptists, calling them American spies and enemies of the Russian Orthodox people. It's alleged one Russian officer told Christians in Ukraine, Evangelical believers like you should be completely destroyed. You need to be buried alive. The new report confirms what Release International is hearing from its partners in Ukraine. The pastors are being targeted and churches closed in areas under Russian occupation. In 2016, President Putin required all religious organizations and churches in Russia to register with the government. It effectively outlawed foreign missionary work and has led to the persecution of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the occupied territories, along with Baptists and other Protestant denominations. This counter-terrorism measure has been used to prosecute American Baptist and Pentecostal missionaries and to burn Bibles. 
In Russia itself, there are signs that the state is clamping down on religious protests against the war. On March the 30th, a Moscow court jailed a 63-year-old Orthodox Christian for seven years for condemning Russia's war on social media. Mikhail Simonov posted, We, Russia, have become godless. Forgive us, Lord. Human rights organization Forum 18 says Simonov is the first person to be jailed for expressing his religious opposition to the war. Others are also now standing trial. Musician Anna Shagina was arrested for displaying the Bible verse, Blessed are the peacemakers, during an anti-war protest in March 2022. And welcome back, everybody, to the second half of the last Christian newscast and radio show. As we went to break, I even called it the last Christian radio show and newscast. I'm still confused by that. We hadn't been doing it that long. Uh, Anyway, not that that matters one bit. Uh, We are back for uh, part two here of the last Christian newscast and radio show. Again, my name is J.D. Williams here in East Texas, joined by my co-host there in the Dallas and Fort Worth area, Mr. T.L. Terry Farley. And the reason I went into such a long things uh, when we got going with Terry about all the years that he's done and all that kind of stuff is because we're going to get to that point here in a few minutes where the two of us have a disagreement on one scripture. Wow. I mean, you know, and so if you guys want to criticize us for being, you know, having a disagreement on one scripture, then you're working too hard to find a problem. That's the only thing I can tell you. Because, you know, we don't have a problem with it. So I don't know why you would. Okay. So uh, anyway, Terry, um, I do want to get back into uh, Matthew or Mark, whichever one you want to go to. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. I think we haven't had really an in-depth discussion about the rapture for weeks, maybe two, three Mm -hmm. months. I don't Mm -hmm. know. You know, and Mm -hmm. we're now at the point in our Matthew discussion and you mm-hmm. went to it with Mark as well, and I said, you know, okay, mm-hmm. these two are like mirror images of each other, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, I know you've got a lot to say on this topic. I know you've written mm-hmm. extensively on this topic. So mm-hmm. all you got to do is mm-hmm. you tell me what scripture you want to see, and we will talk about it. So go ahead. It floor is yours. Okay, now here's my thought. Here's okay. my thought. All right. Because I think you said you have um, 1 Thessalonians 5 also available. I do, Did yes. you say that? Yes. Okay. Now, I have it also, but what I've done, as an example, I've taken 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2, mm-hmm. and then I matched them with Matthew 24, 43. Okay. Uh, and then I match them with Mark 13, 36. Then okay. I go on, and each time, and I've even color-coded them, so I know... Where I'm okay, well, we're not going to see any of the so, color coding. Yeah, we're, we're not going to see any of your yeah. color coding or any no, of that. So no. what uh, what I'm saying is, is I've got all those. So you just tell me what yeah. scripture you want up on the screen, and I'll get it. So you just you you okay. tell me what you want. And and this is my last effort on that. Okay. What I'm trying to do is redeem the time. So I've already got them placed this way. You would have to go back and forth to switch them. That's right. I can give them and then if you need to go in and look at something then you can go right to where you need to go okay Let, let's just so go ahead and call for a scripture right here which which, which scripture would you like right. to have up first thessalonians 5 1 and 2 okay there we go i'll get it up here on screen here in just a second and you can go ahead and, and read it if you want by the way terry's okay. in the, uh, in the um uh authorized king james version if i remember what you said to me correctly I did. and yeah. and what i'm going to be showing to people on screen is from the New King James Version, and there really is no significant differences. And Terry, if you want to talk about differences, you can. But anyway, here is First Thessalonians 5. Let's put this started out here. Go ahead. Yeah, no, they're not not at this point. There's not any need. First Thessalonians 5, verses 1 and 2, Paul speaking, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Now, to respond to that, I'd like to look at Matthew 24, 43, and Mark 13, 36, 37. I don't want to overload you now. Okay. Well, here is uh, Matthew 24, and you said what now? Which one did you want? 43. Okay, 43. there it is. Got it on screen. Jesus speaks. Okay, Jesus speaking says, but know this, 
that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. In Mark 13, 36, 37. Okay, give me Jesus a second on Mark. Mark. Mark what now? Not a Mark. problem. Mark 13, okay. verses 36 and 37. 36 and 37 I'm digging for here. Hold on. Let me see mm -hmm. if I can find it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we got, I got it up there for you now. Go ahead. Okay. And Jesus speaking, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Amen. Okay. okay so that's the first passage. Okay. Um, it depends on how you want to follow. Okay. To well, talk yeah, about the I, I'm going to get I'm I'm going to get the 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 one out of the way that we have a disagreement on, and then that way we All can right. just roll on with everything else. Okay. Like I said, there's only one. Okay. Just All one. All right. Well, let and, me read it then. I got it okay. right in front of me. Okay. Go right if ahead. If you want. Go ahead. Okay. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians five three. Paul is speaking, and he says, "For when they shall say, peace and safety." Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right. Okay. Okay. And, then and the response is Mark thirteen. Well, uh, well hang on. Before 32. we get, but before we get to the yeah. response, okay. Before we get yeah. to the response, yeah. let, let let me get to sure. the difference, okay? Because mm -hmm. in my opinion, the way I understand it, okay. And this is sure. just me. This is J D Williams, not a prophet. Yeah. Not somebody that wrote mm -hmm. the book or anything else, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, okay, in mm -hmm. my opinion, this thing is titled the day of the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in my opinion, this particular verse right here, uh, for when they say peace and safety, that is at the three yeah. and a half year mark, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. are in this they, they are in the third temple. They believe mm -hmm. that they have achieved peace and safety with Israel. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist then comes in and puts an end to sacrifice. He declares mm -hmm. himself to be God, demands to be worshipped. The Jews realize that he is, in fact, the Antichrist and that Jesus is, in fact, the Lord, or at least the beginning of that recognition, and they run for the hills. Now, I know that your interpretation of this is that this uh, has to do with the rapture of the church. That's where we have our disagreement. And again, mm -hmm. this is in no way does this affect my salvation, mm -hmm. Terry's salvation, mm -hmm. or any yeah. other Christian's salvation. It's just two individuals mm -hmm. with two different mm -hmm. understandings of one verse. That's it. Okay, Terry, mm -hmm. now if you want to tell me about uh, Mark, you can do that, or you can address mm -hmm. what I said, whatever you want to do. Okay, yeah, Mark 13, verses 32 through 37. 32, Jesus okay, hold on. Let me get it up on screen. Yeah, I'm so, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Go 13, right ahead. Go ahead. Verses 32 through 37. Jesus speaking to believers and all who read this, but of that day and that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take you heed, watch and pray. For you know not when the time is, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he uh, finds you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Amen. Amen. And, you know, that on this, we've got no disagreement whatsoever mm -hmm. because that mm -hmm. is basically a description of the rapture of the church. It's going mm -hmm. to happen. It is next mm -hmm. on the uh, prophetic calendar. Mm -hmm. Jesus will shout for his church, and all Christians, living and dead, will mm -hmm. be gathered together in the air taken to heaven where we will wait. And I don't know if we watch or not. And may, you can tell me, yeah. do, do we watch what's happening on earth? I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, there are some references, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. For the next seven years, God unleashes his wrath. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that seven years, mm -hmm. then we come back with Jesus to mm -hmm. take care of the issue. 
Okay. So yes. anyway, that uh, uh, again on that one, we've got no no disagreement whatsoever. Terry, you can either go into that and and continue that that teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. or uh, you've still got two minutes left. Okay, so do you, do you want to do your two minutes now, or do you want to take it in, in a couple of minutes? When do you want to do it? Oh, man. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, let me go ahead and do this. I, it's, now I don't know if am I going to. Yeah, okay, First Thessalonians 5, 4, 7. Let's go on. Okay, Paul's okay. First Thessalonians 5, for what? 5, verses 4 through 7. 4 through 7, okay. Let me, and this let is me find it here. following these. Okay. This is immediately following by five three where it talks about the anyway, it says um Paul speaking to believers, but you brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Again, the thief reference. These things are all, I believe, my personal opinion, they're all tied together. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So I believe that responds to the idea of this being the rapture and also referring, referencing Mark. Um, okay. And again, I could I could wax uh, maybe not eloquent, but I could certainly wax for a whole long time on why these things I see these things in the scripture. But okay. that's I believe Paul is answering that. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Well, that's fine. You know, and, and again, uh, what what you've said per makes perfect sense. You know, and I'm sure that there's a, a lot of people out there that are in 100 agreement with you. I'm sure there may be a couple of people that agree with me. Okay, I don't know. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, like I said, it's not a salvation issue. You know, it's one verse no, it's that Terry not. and I agree and on. By the way, know, so. yeah, and by the way, yeah, by the way, I did miss a verse, and that's part of the always, I'm always hesitating because I know I'm going to miss something. Matthew 24, 43, Jesus is talking. But know this, that if the good man of the house, he's just repeating what Paul talked about, okay. had known in what watch the thief, and again, we emphasize the thief to draw these things together. The thief would come. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be you also ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. Now, notice that's talking about tying it in with the Son of Man coming as opposed, which is in Revelation 19, where it's a perfect description of Jesus coming back to the earth uh, and destroying the enemy with the word of his mouth, as it says. Um, so there we see the another tie-in to, to this particular perspective. Okay. Okay. And again, it makes perfect sense. It really does. Okay, Terry, uh, I am going to give you your two minutes. Okay. So okay. um, we'll, right. we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Today, yeah. And uh, okay. so anyway, this is uh, part two of... Uh, uh, we do it every. We, we do it in every show, first part and second part, and this is the first Christian charge with Mister Terry Farley. The earth brought the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. The tree yielding fruit his seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the uh, moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in open firmament of heaven. God created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the 
seas. Let the fowl multiply in the earth, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, uh, Terry, just a few news items here real quick. Um, first yeah. of all, uh, India is set to review its ties with Russia. Uh, there is the, mm-hmm. um, the foreign minister, there, Eli Cohen of uh, Israel, mm-hmm. uh, is traveling to New Delhi next week. Um, and the visit is actually to set the tone for a visit by Prime Minister ben- Benjamin Netanyahu that is likely to happen in India later this year. This is the mm-hmm. third highest level visit by a senior Israeli official in less than three months. The high level visits mm-hmm. are being seen as a prelude to that much anticipated visit by uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, India and Russia have suspended negotiations to uh, settle a trade deal. Uh, They have Mm -hmm. been being paid in Indian, and and you're going to think I'm saying ruples, but I'm not. This is rupees, Mm -hmm. which is uh, what uh, India uses. Uh, This is out of New Mm -hmm. Delhi. It said that India and Russia have suspended the efforts to settle their bilateral trade in rupees after months of negotiations Mm -hmm. failed to convince Moscow to keep rupees in its coffers. Uh, Two Indian officials uh, have have been talking about it says on whether money was also being routed to china the official said yes definitely china is involved also uh, since russia's invasion of the ukraine on february 24th india's imports from russia have risen to 51.3 billion uh, that's through uh, april 15th and that is up now remember i just said 51.3 billion uh, this is up from 10.6 billion from the previous year. So if you don't think that Russia is offsetting all of those sanctions that are in place, think again, okay? Because that's yeah. just India. That doesn't count anybody anybody else. Any comment on that, Terry? Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you that we're just being fed a lot of um yeah. <laughs> junk. Exa- because, yeah, exactly. You know, Exactly. You know, China is becoming a bigger and a bigger and a bigger player, and that's why I'm playing you this one. Foreign ministers from the eight member countries of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization are arriving in the Indian state of Goa for meetings. Russia, China, India and Pakistan are part of the political, economic and security bloc. Rebecca Bundin reports from Goa. Russia's Sergei Lavrov is among the foreign ministers attending the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or SCO, meeting as Moscow's war in Ukraine continues. The main ministerial meeting will be held on Friday. While India is hosting the meeting in the coastal state of Goa, this comes as its relations with China and Pakistan remain tense amid border disputes. Pakistan's Bilawal Bhutto Zadari will be the first foreign minister from the neighbouring country to visit India since 2011. The aim of the grouping is to promote political, security and economic ties. Rebecca Bundin, Goa. Okay, so that just gives you an idea. You know, China's becoming more and more powerful. You heard me earlier in the newscast say that we had actually withdrawn U.S. air forces uh, that were in a position to protect Taiwan. So, you know, while the United States is is backing up, Russia and China are accelerating. And I believe that that fits perfectly with the Gog and Magog war to happen in Israel because they're coming together as a coalition. They're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're being heard more and more and more on the world stage. You don't hear anything from the United States. You just don't. We are at a standstill. We are at a withdrawal. We are at a retreat. We are stepping down from the world stage, in my opinion. Do you have a different opinion than that, Mr. Farley? I don't know how you could have a different opinion, Joel. Um, my goodness, when you leave, that's not showing force. That's yeah. showing the backside. Yeah, you know? right. Okay, uh, let, so let, let's talk about Israel here real quick. Uh, Israel, uh, yeah. th- th- this is coming from the Jerusalem Post, and it says, Israel mm-hmm. cannot defend itself against Iran, 
or the Palestinians. That according to mm. Rossi, of course, who is the president of Iran. Don't think Israel is saying mm-hmm. that. that uh, they're only reporting yeah. it, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, Iranian President Rossi said, the Zionist entity cannot supply itself with security because the conditions are significantly different from the past. Today, it's clear to everyone that the Sharm El Sheikh, that's S H E I K, okay, yeah. Camp yeah. David and Oslo agreements cannot supply Israel with security. The Zionist entity knows very well that it can never clash with Iran. The Zionist entity, entity cannot supply itself with security because the conditions are significantly different than they were. In the past, Rossi's comments came as the Islamic Jihad and Hamas shot at least 32 rockets toward Israel on Tuesday after the Islamic Jihad leader died in an Israeli prison from a hunger strike. Yeah, that's what caused all that initial stuff. We talked about it in the show last time that there was Mm -hmm. at that point 22 missiles. Now it's it's up over 100 at this point. But mm-hmm. um, the reason for that is because they had a prisoner, they had an Iranian prisoner mm-hmm. that refused to eat for a long time. I don't even remember what the day count was, but it was incredible mm-hmm. that he lasted that long, mm-hmm. okay? And mm-hmm. when he died, then they, of course, they said, well, Israel killed him, so they attacked with rockets. No, if he had just ate, he mm-hmm. would have been fine. Okay, now then, yeah. uh, another report here, uh, this one coming from the Iran International News. This is uh, uh, the... Quds commander, that's Q-U-D-S commander, says that Iran has humiliated Israel. Iran has humiliated Israel by organizing Islamic resistance. Um, At this point, Israel has reached a level of humiliation that it has surrounded itself with barbed wire and radars to prevent our infiltration. Now, this is the commander that replaced um, Soleimani or Soleimani or Mm -hmm. whatever that that, that Trump killed. He's gone. Yeah, same same guy, okay. Uh, uh, he boasted that because of Tehran's efforts to instill the spirit of resistance, some days up to 30 attacks take place against Israel that their media try to hide. Okay, he just admitted right here that they, for no mm-hmm. reason whatsoever, launch at least 30 mm-hmm. missiles a day at Israel. He just admitted that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, you know, keep that in mind. The shift in power from west to east has begun, is what he says. Uh, referring to China Mm -hmm. becoming a diplomatic and military power in addition to its economic clout. So again, here's China stepping up again, United States stepping down, China stepping up like we were talking Mm -hmm. about before. In this shift, Mm -hmm. the Islamic Republic should find its rightful place with God's help. No, they're not going to find their rightful place by going against Mm -hmm. God. And the Bible says you're going to go against God. And the Bible says you're going to lose. I'd love to send this guy yeah. a copy of the Bible. I really would. Okay. Uh, then um, Iran has enough uranium for five nuclear weapons, not just one. You know who said that? Mm. Prime Minister mm. Benjamin Netanyahu. Wow. That's who said they that. they know. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, then also uh, Defense Minister Gallant is another one, and he's mm-hmm. re, he is reinforcing this just today, that uh, Iran mm-hmm. currently has enough enriched uranium for five nuclear weapons should it decide to weaponize that uranium and complete the detonation and delivery task for firing a weapon. It says Iran is not sufficing with one nuclear bomb. It has already accumulated enough enriched uranium at the 20% and 60% levels for five nuclear bombs. Uh, he added that if Iran enriches to 90% weaponized level, it would be a great era, and the price would be heavy, and there would be consequences which could inflame the Middle East. Think about that. Could inflame the Middle East. What, What? you yeah. know, um, I'm thinking Gog, Magog war. I'm thinking uh, mm-hmm. uh, Ezekiel 38, 39. I'm thinking mm-hmm. Isaiah 17, 1. Any comment, Terry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, in fact, uh, all of these pieces, if people are paying attention to the news, all of these pieces are moving into place. Yeah. Um, 17, 1, uh, 38, um, all of them 
Uh, mm-hmm. the, the whole thing is just coming together, and we're watching it. It's just it's just amazing. It's which is amazing. It goes back to Jesus's um, plea to. He said, "Let not your heart be troubled." You know, he said, "You're going to see these things. They're right. going to." And and lo and behold. <laughs> we are seeing these things. Oh, without a doubt, <laughs> without a doubt, we are seeing them. We are that final yeah. generation, in our opinion. Yeah. I think I think Terry agrees with me that yeah, we I we do. truly believe we are the last uh, generation. Uh, to follow up on that last report, just a bit more, the Mossad. And for those of you that aren't familiar, this is like a spy organization within Israel. The, uh, they yeah. they can accomplish more than <laughs> than our CIA, that's for sure. But yeah, anyway, that's uh, right. the Mossad has unveiled significant aspects of the weapons group uh, when it seized uh, Iran's, uh, uh, Iran's nuclear archives. In other words, they were mm-hmm. in Iran and they got nuclear archives back in 2018. It said that spy mm-hmm. mission also established in Iranian documents, that its goal has always been a minimum of five nuclear weapons, which is now closer to than ever. Again, that is uh, from that previous report. And yeah. here's another one, <clears throat> and this one this one hits close to home. Okay, mm-hmm. this is also uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu per the um, Jerusalem Post there that uh, Iran could blackmail any American city. If it acquires nuclear weapons, this again, according to uh, Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he told this to a group of visiting congressional, a bipartisan group um, that had visited from the United States to have Iran being able to threaten every city in the United States with nuclear blackmail is a changing of history. Iran is 50 North Korea's. It is not merely a neighborhood bully like the dynasty that rules North Korea. This is an ideological force that views us, Israel, as a small Satan and views you as the great Satan. That's what he told this delegation led by the House of Representatives Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, uh, Chairman Michael Turner, uh, and he is a Republican out of uh, Ohio. So, um, as you can see, things are tightening up. Things are happening very, very quickly. Um, Boy, you know, howdy. <laughs> uh, if, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, Amen. we implore Amen. you to please do so. The rapture yes. is real. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, forget about the one verse that Terry and I disagree on. Forget about that. <laughs> let's, let's concentrate on all of the other 1,350 plus scriptures that we agree on, and specifically those that say the rapture's next, the rapture's imminent, imminent, it can happen at any time, okay? So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray that prayer of salvation. Simply ask God to come into your heart to forgive you for your sins. Acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Messiah. If you're in Israel, and a lot of people are, okay? Acknowledge that, please. Accept Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. So please Amen. take advantage of it. If you don't, and you're hanging around after the rapture of the church, you got to go through seven years of tribulation, or at least a part of them. So there's yeah. no reason to do that. We appreciate each and every one of you that tune in for every one of our shows. We appreciate each one mm-hmm. of our affiliates who has agreed to broadcast us for a full hour. So, you know, if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. You can comment on uh, on our disagreement thing if you want to. We're fine with that. Whatever you want to do, we would love to hear from you. Uh, But like the videos, share the videos, ring that little bell, and that little bell will let you know every time that we post a new video on uh, YouTube as well. So, yeah, if the rapture does not occur between now and our next show, we'll be back. And we hope that you'll join us for another edition of The Last Christian Newscast and Radio Show. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds.